Shavua Tov everyone and uh, wishing you all a good week. This week is going to be the Hilula, the yard site of a great Yemenite rabbi, someone with the name Rabbi Mordechai Shirabi. He was actually of Yemenite descent and actually was born in the year 1908 and passed away in about the year 1984 this week. And he was a very, very great Kabbalist, very great rabbi. And was orphaned at a very young age. He was, uh, he was an orphan and uh, ended up learning at a very, very young age and actually received his smicha, a rabbinic ordination, at the age of 15 years old. He was in his mid-teenager years over there. He was tested on Shulchan Aruch and the Gemara and the Mishnayot and uh, everything, the whole of the Torah, and uh, got a rabbinic ordination, which is astounding at such a young age, and was learning the whole time and teaching and eventually moved to Jerusalem, moved to uh, Yerushalayim, in uh, after his 20s he actually he he got married and was married for 50 years and they didn't have children unfortunately and one time he was crying to hashem and asking why has this happened I really really wanted children and uh he knows there's uh you know but hashem answered him and said oh, most a lot of amisrael uh, uh, amisrael is all your children and the boy, boy he became a great great rabbi a great great father to tens of thousands of uh of talmidim of students all across israel he uh, was uh, in the year 1967, after the Six Day War, he started up a yeshiva, Yeshivat Nahar Shalom, which was based in Machano Yehuda, the famous shuk, the famous market which there is in Jerusalem. He started up a yeshiva there and had many Kabbalists and they learned the Kabbalist, Kabbalistic intentions and uh, the tefillot and the uh, prayers and everything else and uh, with the most esteemed uh, Talmudim he had. He had notable students including Rabbi Benayahu Shmueli, who is, happens to be now the Rosh Yeshiva of this esteemed yeshiva in uh, Yerushalayim. And uh, Rabbi Ovadi Yosef said that uh, Rabbi Mordechai Shrabi was, there was none like him in his generation. That's how great of a rabbi he was. And he was teaching there. He, it was after the 1967 war where Parat Yosef had been burned down. And there wasn't even a brick that was remaining there. And he knew that there needs to be a sheba straight away open. And he started in a basement originally, where we know it starts on the bottom. Usually the things do, but oh boy, he became one of the greatest yeshivot at the time. He wrote many books uh, uh, based on the Rosh Hashanah Kodosh, the Tfilot, the prayers of the Rosh Hashanah Kodosh as a guideline to many people, and many people read it today, and wrote many, many different contrasts and uh, pamphlets at those stages in time. You know, there used to be people that come to him in the morning for brachot. In the evening, there was long lines of people where people waited for hours. And one time, someone waited for a long time and apologized to Rabbi Mordech Chai Shrabi why he took up his time, but Rabbi Mordechai Shrabi answered with the most gentleness that, uh, you know, the world is built on chesed, on kindness. That's what the world is, and he was pure, pure kindness, pure, pure, pure love for Am Yisrael. There's many stories that can be related. I relate three stories over how great this rabbi was. They say, I believe it was a time of, uh, before the founding of the state, maybe it was, where they put a curfew on uh, the people outside. They, they didn't allow people to go outside the house in the evening at a specific time, and it happened to be Shabbat. And he was, he was delved in his uh, tefillot, walking in the streets, coming back from the Bacon Desert, and they wanted to arrest him. The police officers did. I don't know if it was at the time of the British or whatever it was. And they arrested him. They took him inside the car, the police car. And uh, as they arrested him, they were about to switch on the engine. There was a loud boom, a lo loud bang sign. And uh, they came out and said they realized nothing ever happened. And they realized all the tires had been broken. It was like a mir miracle happened. And they realized they... Check, check themselves, they check the cars, they realize nothing could have triggered it, and they must have realized that uh, they've done something wrong with this, this great rabbi, you know, a miracle had occurred, and they drove him, they took him back to his place, escorted him back, and made sure no one else could potentially uh, harm him, because they knew how great the rabbi was, and it was Kiddush Hashem. Second story, at the time of the 1967 war, there was a parachuter that came to him and asked him for a bracha, he was worried, obviously nervous, you know, at the time, Am Yisrael was at risk, you know, it was an existential threat with a threat to the Six Day War. And there was a parachute who came and said, what should I do? I'm, I'm scared. What's, what if something wrong is going to happen? So Rabbi Mordechai Shirabi told him, say a specific tefillah, and if he's going to come into a hardship, he's going to be rescued straight away. And as he was coming down, the parachute would not open. He was skydiving down and he was looking at a crash ending. He, he tried opening it once, twice, it didn't open. Finally, remember the tefillah that uh, Rabbi Mordechai Shrabi said, said the tefillah and it opened straight away and he came to a very safe landing straight away. Another story, there was one time on Yom Kippur, there was a big wicked person in Russia. He wanted, he said to himself, I'm going to try, he would try to agitate all the Rabbanim. That was what he lived on, he breathed on. 
and he try he wants to agitate Rabbi Mordechai Shravi and get him angry on Yom Kippur. And he came with his motorbike and started speaking to him b'chutzvah. However, Rabbi Mordechai Shravi, who was just full, full of love, said to him, "You know, uh, come to the Beit Knesset. I wish you a good Yom Kippur. I wish you well with whatever you're doing and everything else." And uh, the guy was astounded. You know, was not expecting that reaction and dropped the. Uh, got off the motorbike and started thinking, went to the Beit Knesset, that Yom Kippur, then went the next week, the next week, and the constantly went, and he made a Chuzib a 360 degree turn. He couldn't realize there's people with such love in this world, like uh, Rabbi Mordechai Shiravi. Many, many different stories could be related over. And he, he, as I said before, he was a founder of the yeshiva. He raised a lot of money and gave a lot of money to poor people throughout his life. He, he helped a lot of people, a lot of Torah scholars. Any extra money he had, he gave to everyone, he distributed it. He lived a very simple life, not with luxuries or anything else, and uh, just lived on what was the basic needs and gave all his money away. And uh, he, he was very strict on, not strict, but he had a lot of love to give to children, uh, made to Hillim clubs where people come together on Shabbat and read to Hillim in big groups together and uh, paid for it, uh, raised the money for it and uh, did so much kindness in his world. The whole of his life was chesed, 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 kindness, kindness, kindness in this world. And uh, it's going to be a Zulula this week on Chaf Cheshvan. It's going to be where uh, it's, I believe, about, uh, we're talking about nearly 40 years ago, he had passed away. On this week already, and uh, still the yeshiva is still running. I still believe Rabbi Benayahu Shmueli is a Rosh Hashiva, one of his students, and he really was one of a kind, Rabbi Mordechai Shrabi, one of the greatest Rabbonim, probably from Yemenites in uh, the history of uh, Yemen. Very, very great, and had a lot of different students. Also, Rabbi Mordechai Atia, and many, many different great students. And maybe we light candles in his support, in his memory, and learn about him, search about him online, Rabbi Mordechai Shrabi. His name is uh, from the great Shrabi family, and he wrote books on the Rosh Hashanah Kadosh, on uh, the tefillot, how to do the Kabbalist, uh, Kabbalistic tefillot. Guys, I want to wish you all a great week. Please learn about him, and uh, be well, guys. And uh, hopefully I'll do another show in due course. Thanks.